Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, AD744. So today, guys, I'm going to give you guys my match reaction to Spain, Germany, and France, Portugal. Let's talk about the Spain-Germany game first. Shout out to Spain. What Spain did on the day was incredible. They created history. They're the first nation. There is the first time they ever did be the host nation in an international tournament. You have to give your round of applause to Spain because that's a commendable achievement. This also means this is the, this continues Germany's winless record against Spain since 1988. That's the last time Germany has defeated Spain in a competitive game. And I look at this game in particular, right? This was kind of a game where Spain played really well. I thought Spain, for me, were actually the better team of the day. Um, I think Germany did create a good chances, um, but the Spain team was perfect. Like, you have to give credit to Luis de la Fuente for getting his lineup spot on there. I think he pulled out the best possible 11, maybe with the exception of Nacho. Um, but other than that, I thought he was pretty good for Nagelsmann, though. What was he thinking with his lineup? Why on the earth would you start Emery Chan in the midfield? It made no sense. I understand that, you know, Andrej may not be fully fit potentially, but it doesn't make sense because you brought um, uh, Andrej on the at half time. Like, it doesn't make sense to me. So it was it was definitely a tactical change. And why in earth is Sonny starting? Because in that first half, guys, in that first 45 minutes, you could see clearly that it was Spain that were actually the better team that are creating more chances. And Spain created a lot more opportunities. You have Mall there with the effort the 45th minute. And then obviously you had that effort right here. Um, right here. The, uh, Pedri got the save there. And by the way, guys, Pedri got destroyed. Uh, Pedri got a nasty injury. Tony Cruz there made a strong challenge to him. Guys, Tony Cruz probably just got sent off this game. The amount of fouls who's coming in the game was ridiculous. And you can see Spain were actually being more vibrant. You know, Rodri, uh, Fabian Ruiz had a chance there. The Williams had the chance. Um, and then obviously Laporte had effort there. And Spain were just creating a lot more chances. S S Germany, on the other hand, all the chances they got was from transition. Denny Olmo there in the 39th minute. Um, all the chances they got were in transition. And they had some decent chances. Obviously, Havertz there with the save there. Um, Header, Taw. But yeah, Germany were pretty poor the first half, guys. It wasn't great. Second half, though, Spain did up things a bit. as Spain got that goal there. Great, great goal there from Denny Olmo. Great uh, goal there. Uh, from Danny Olmo to equal to make it 1-0. Great combination there. And Danny Olmo stepped up. Danny Olmo stepped up. Honestly, guys, Danny Olmo has been so underrated. I think he needs to start for Germany of uh, Spain the next game. He was fantastic. But this is where I thought Spain kind of messed up because Spain went super defensive after taking the lead. And this is where I think you may have to be critical of Luis de la Fuente because he went defensive and he made those changes. He brought a Nacho Fernandez. He took off Ferran Torres. He took a Michael. He brought a Michael Moreno, and he took Nico Williams and took Yamal off, which was crazy. But I think that's probably because of minutes restrictions, and and Morata off. He literally took the front three off when Spain were one nil up. And I understand you want to go defensive, but you shouldn't go super defensive that early in the second half. You know, and Germany almost came back because Germany created a lot of substitution. Nagelsmann knew that that first half they were very underwhelming, so they made he made some changes, bringing Warts off the bench, bringing on Andrich, bringing on Middlestad, full Krug. Thomas Müller and Anton. And the, Germany were going all in for that goal. They were going all in. Eventually, they get the goal there. Great cost there from Kimmich. Great goal there from Florian Wurz to score in the 89th minute. And you yourself now. Now the momentum is with Germany because Spain have just conceded a goal, a last-minute goal, and Germany are, um, could have, uh, G Germany are back in this, you know. And then extra time, though, credit to Spain. Spain stayed alive, and Spain were great in the extra time. It was pretty even. Um, I think it was close. And uh, then Spain, man, right there at the end. Michael Moreno coming off the bench. 80th minute scores a beautiful header. I don't know what Rudiger is doing there at the back line. He was terrible defensively. And for um for Spain, man, they held on, man. Obviously, Germany had a late chance there at the end to draw a level. Fulcrick had a chance there at the end to draw a level, but it wasn't to be. And Spain holds on for a massive 2-1 win. So you have to give credit to Luis de la Fuente, man. He, got, he, almost, he almost messed up, though, with the substitutions. But I think Danny Olmo was the man of the match got a goal and got the assist for the winning goal. And I think in, in De La Fuente knows that he needs to start Nacho Fernandez. Nacho needs to start the next game for Spain because when Nacho came on, Spain looked a lot more short. And the one thing that Spain's going to be missing, though, in the semifinals is that Morata is suspended due to yellow card accumulation, um, which is a bit a, a big bummer, I believe. I think Morata is suspended, right? Yeah, I think Morata is suspended. Let me just check the facts here. Yeah, Morata, um, not on the pitch, got a yellow card, so he'll be suspended. And obviously... 
Uh, Carvalho is recently been good. He's got a second yellow, so he's going to miss the semifinal. So how will Spain uh, uh, compensate for that? I, I, I think there's been several players that might be missing the semifinal. So for Spain, as I said, man, it's a big win for them, massive win for them. And for Germany, man, as I said, man, I think Nagelsmann messed up. I think Nagelsmann messed up with that first half, making those, uh, make, making those gambles, and those gambles didn't really pay off. And I think Germany, for me, in this game, were just underwhelming. Havertz missed so many chances. And I think for Germany, man, I think this was a this was the reality for them. And by the way, guys, Germany have created history in the wrong way. They're the first host nation to ever get eliminated in the quarterfinals. It's never happened before in history, and Germany has created unwanted records. So Germany, man, it is disappointing because they were the team I picked to win the Euros, and they didn't. And so now for Germany, as I said, man, I still think they had a good Euros. I think you have to put that in perspective. I think getting to the quarterfinals was like the bare minimum expectation. But I really feel like they should have. They, I, I really do feel like <sighs> semis was there for the taking. But shout out to Spain. Spain did what they needed to do. And I think for Spain, they're looking like one of the favorites to win this now. And now they'll be playing against a potential. They'll be playing now against France. That will be very interesting. That actually segues nicely to this game. Portugal, France. Guys, this game, there's not a whole lot to discuss. Both teams were extremely defensive on the day. Um, and both teams really were poor offensively. Now, I would actually say that Portugal actually played more proactive in this game. I think Portugal actually showed more initiative and intent of scoring a goal, um, especially in extra time. Uh, for, uh, Portugal really did want the goal, it seems. Whereas for France, they didn't really look that great. France were very, very underwhelming. Uh, they didn't even get a single shot on target in extra time. And France were just really, really, uh, really poor there. They uh, and they just weren't great. You know, Mbappe had that effort there at the la at last minute to uh, to seal it, but it wasn't to be. And I just think for France in particular, man, th this was a game that was always be a bad game. It was a bad game. Um, in the first half, though, I think uh, Por France were actually slightly better. Portugal didn't get any chances on target, uh, but it wasn't really that much better. You know, and you could tell that France, their main game, their main aim in this game was to hit in the transition. Every time France went in transition, they created. They created chances. You know, Portugal were being more pro, being more offensive, being more intent with possession. And it just makes me very critical of Didier Deschamps because Didier Deschamps, for me, you have to answer a lot of questions because Didier Deschamps, for me, went extremely defensive in this game. And it almost backfired because it was also crazy that France won this on pens because Portugal are very, Portugal have great penalty takers, you know? After Diego Costa, he just made three saves in the last shootout. Now he didn't make any saves in this game. You know, Mike non technically didn't make a save either. It was Joao Felix that missed the pen. And Didier Deschamps, man, he made some big decisions. He brought Dembele off the bench, Marcus Thuram, Yusuf Fafan, and Bradley Barcoli. He took Mbappe off, which is a big ball decision, Griezmann off, took Moani off, and take Kamavinga off. I'm surprised that Drew didn't come on. I think Drew still, I don't know what's up with Drew and Coman. I'm not sure why those guys aren't getting any minutes. And same for Zaire Emery. And for Portugal, as I said, man, I just don't understand why Bernardo Silva is still starting. Bernardo Silva is just a mid player. He just doesn't do much for Portugal. I thought Leal was okay in the game. Bruno Fernandes was decent. Ronaldo, he had some efforts, but Ronaldo ultimately was very ineffective. He wasn't really that great. He had some chances there in the 93rd minute. That was a big miss. He should have scored that chance. 85th. And yes, yeah, 63rd. So Ronaldo was particularly not that great. Um, I think uh, Portugal's midfield, Vitinha, Paulinha were excellent. I thought defensively they were pretty good. It's just Portugal's offense is so lackluster. Portugal, need, uh, like I, I don't understand why um, Pedro Neto is not getting game time. I don't understand why Jobs is not getting game time. I, I don't understand these two players. These two players should be getting more game time. And for Portugal, as I said, man, it's just very ineffective, very boring football, very defensive. And Roberto Martinez is just a defensive manager. And the same goes for Didi Deschamps. They're both defensive. And for France, man, I'm going to have to see a lot more for France if they want to win this Euros because they've been super defensive and they've been so lackluster in the attack. They really have. And for France, they're going to have to really figure something out because I don't know what's wrong with this France team. Like, their attack is just not clicking. Griezmann's been underwhelming. Mbappe is being played as a striker. And I told you guys, Mbappe just doesn't work as a striker. If you want to get the best out of Mbappe, you had to play as a winger. Colomani had wasn't great. And yeah, France need to put Giroud more. I don't know why Giroud's not getting more game time and Coman as well. So, shout out to France. They're in the semifinals. They were playing against Spain. That should be an interesting game, of course, on Tuesday. And as for Portugal, they're eliminated, of course. So, um, that's pretty much it for my takeaways from these two game, uh, this game. I'd like to say I don't really have much takeaways from this game other than the fact that we saw some defensive uh, heroics. And for France, as I said, man, uh, we'll see what happens. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video, guys. Please remember to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.